Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I have come to rejoice and be glad, and I pray today has been a great day for you, and I've just come to encourage you in the Word. This is our Worship and Word Wednesday, so I just come to bless the Lord with you and, and to uplift your spirit and give you some words of encouragement, sing a song for you, and and, and pray with you so that you can be encouraged in your daily life. Amen. Not just because of the virus, not just because we're in quarantine, not just because what's going on in the world. That is what we need every day. Glory to God. We need encouragement every day. We need the word every day. We need prayer every day. And so I just come as your pastor at the Cedar Creek Community Church, one of the best churches in the world. I pastor some of the best people in the world. And I just come to encourage you today and to give God praise for who he is. Hallelujah. Because truly an incredible God deserves an incredible praise. So why don't you just worship with me today and come and give God some glory. Hallelujah. Anybody know that God is incredible? Anybody know that he deserves an incredible praise? Come on, put your hands together. Come on and give God glory. Come on and give God some honor. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I've had some problems, some great and some small. You being God, delivered me from them all. Still can't believe. Hey, it's an incredible God he deserves. Incredible praise. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Yes, God. I've had, yeah, some grace. You've been God. Delivered me. Still can't believe. Oh.
said he's a healer. He's a keeper. Lord, we love him. He is incredible. Said he's a healer. I mean, I tell you, he'll keep you. That's why we love you, Lord. You're incredible. He's incredible. God's incredible. The God we serve is incredible. You serve an incredible God. Give him glory. Give him praise. Said he's incredible. An incredible God. He deserves incredible praise. Oh Lord. Oh. An incredible God. He deserves. Oh Lord. You deserve incredible praise. Incredible God, He deserves incredible praise. Hallelujah, Lord, we bless your name. Father, we give you glory. You are incredible. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, an incredible God deserves an incredible praise. Come on, right now, in your house, wherever you are, just begin to bless the Lord for being incredible. Just begin to bless the Lord for being strong. Just begin to bless the Lord for being mighty. Just begin to bless the Lord just for who he is. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, hallelujah. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for being incredible. We thank you, Lord, for being mighty. Mighty. We thank you, Lord, for being strong. We thank you, Lord, for being awesome. You are wonderful. You are great, and you are mighty. And because of who you are, we give you praise today. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I said, because of who we are, Lord, we honor you. Because of who we are, but not who we are, but who you are, God, we lift up your name today. It is a great name, and we thank you. Glory to God. You deserve all of our praise. You deserve all of our worship. So God, we just take this time right now in this moment to praise you. Hallelujah. We take this moment to give you glory. Hallelujah. We take this moment to lift you up. Hallelujah. We take this moment to adore your name. We worship you and we come to you right now. God, please accept our worship. Please accept our praise. God, hear our hearts cry. God, we love you. We adore you. We thank you. We can't live without you. You mean so much to us and God. God, we can't pay you for all that you have done, but with the voice that we have, with the body that we have, we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for being right there for us. Thank you for doing just what we need for you to do. We thank you for being our Father. And we say, Abba, Father, hallelujah. We thank you for being our shelter. We thank you for being our provider. We thank you for being our help. We thank you for being our grace. We thank you for being mercy. We thank you for who you are. And because of who we are, we give you glory. God, you created us to worship you. We... You, you created us to give you glory, hallelujah. God, that's our purpose in our life, to bless your name, hallelujah. Your words that you gave us a song, even the angels cannot sing. God, you gave us a song, hallelujah. You gave us a heart, you gave us a mouth, and we praise you right now in the name of Jesus Christ because of who you are, hallelujah. But because of who we are, we have no other choice but to praise you. Because of who we are, we have no other choice but to worship you. Our life depends on our worship, God. We have to connect to you in our worship so we connect to you right now in the name of Jesus God we sit at your feet God we open up our eyes to see your wonders we open up our ears to hear your word we open up our hearts to receive you today so Lord have your way in us right now in the name of Jesus God whatever the need is for the people who are watching whatever's on their hearts Lord I, I ask that you do it right now for them Lord in
in the name of Jesus. Hear their cry, God. Hear their petitions, God. You say that we delight ourselves in you. You shall give us the desires of our heart. God, we are delighting ourselves in you. God, we are loving on you. God, we are living in you. So God, give us the desires of our heart right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Move right now. God, be God. Hallelujah. God, be God. And we know that if you are God, everything that we need is wrapped up in who you are. So God, be God. God, be God in our homes. God, be God in our schools. God, be God in this nation. God, be God in the hospitals. God, be God in our minds right now, in our bodies, in our spirits. Lord, you be God. And that's who you are. And we thank you and we praise you. It is so, it is well, and it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on and give him honor. Hallelujah. Right now we thank you and we bless your name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's get right into this word. Amen. We are coming from Luke tonight. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. And it reads, at the home of Mary and Martha, that was the, that's the inscription of the scripture. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted <clears throat> by all of the preparations that had been made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. That's the New International Version. Let me read that in the message translation. It says, as they continued their travel, Jesus entered the village. A woman by the name of Martha welcomed him and made him feel quite at home. She had a sister, Mary, who sat before the master, hanging on every word he said. But Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. Later, she stepped in, interrupting the master, don't you care that my sister has abandoned the kitchen to me? Tell her to lend me a hand. The master said, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much and getting yourself worked up over nothing. One thing only is essential, and Mary has chosen it. It's the main course and won't be taken from her. And so we're here, we're, we're, we're talking about Mary and Martha. And you know Mary and Martha, they are the sisters of Lazarus. And so this is not the only time we will hear from them in the text. But this is kind of like our introduction to them. They're two sisters, and, and so we, from going into the house and how they're being welcoming to Jesus, we figure that Jesus knew them. Jesus had some type of relationship with them. And, and some said it's believed because of the relationship that Jesus had with Lazarus. He was also very close with Mary and Martha. So here we see in the text that Martha welcomed Jesus in. So here we see hospitality. When you welcome somebody in your home. And that's a gift of the spirit. 
Uh, that's the one of our spiritual gifts that we should have, the gift of hospitality, where we are welcoming to people, where we invite people not into our homes, but just not just into our homes, but into our churches. There has to be a ministry within the church, which is hospitality, who makes people feel welcome when they come in, who, who greets the people so people can feel like when they come to church that the people are loving, that the people are kind, that the people are caring. So that means if you're at the front door of the church, you need to have a good attitude. <laughs> that means if you're an usher, you need to have a good attitude. If you're going to be the first face somebody to see, it needs to be a good face, a smiling face. You need to have a spirit of love, a spirit of hospitality. Make people feel welcome to wherever they're coming. So even in the church or at your house, don't invite somebody to your house and be nasty to them when they come. If you don't want them to come, tell them don't come. <laughs> it's time out. People are dying. The world is going crazy. It's time out for lying to people and just doing stuff to be doing it to make people feel better. Uh, some, you got to keep it real for people. If you if it's going to make you uncomfortable and make you feel a certain type of way, and it's going to make you feel outside of yourself and make you be fake and phony, just don't do it. Don't put yourself in those positions where you have to be unhospitable. <laughs> it just don't put yourself in a position where you can't show hospitality to someone because that is something that the Lord desires for us to be welcoming to people in all areas of our lives. We need to be hospitable to people and people. That's how people find us friendly. That's how we come into relationship with people by the way we treat them once we first meet them. Amen. And so here we see that Martha shows hospitality to Jesus, but she welcomed him in made him feel quite at home, but then she got busy with work. So that means that she welcomed Jesus in, but then got busy and started preparing things for him or doing his work or, or doing other things that she felt that was needed to be done for him, but she forgot about him. So let us not, when we, let me say it like this, when we get saved, Amen. We're, we're all on fire for Jesus. Amen. We have accepted Jesus into our lives and we, we just want to get to work for him. We just want to do his will. We want to do his way. We want to do everything we can. We want to be at the church Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, start back all over again. We want to be there for every time it opens up. We want to be on every auxiliary. We want to be in every ministry. We want to be on all the choirs. We want to be on all the boards. And we're so busy. We're so busy because we feel like us being busy is us being more saved. Hallelujah. Me being at the church all the time, that, that shows people that I am saved. That shows people that I am holy. That's not showing people that you are holy. That really shows some folk that you ain't got no life. <laughs> that you don't have no balance. You don't have nothing to do outside of the church. People know that you are saved. People know that you are holy by what you do in your life, the way you live, the way you treat people, the things you say, your actions, not just by where you are. Your location does not um, um, designate how saved you are. Just being at the church all the time does not designate how saved you are. It's what's in your heart. And eventually, what's in your heart is going to come out. You can't work so much and be so busy that you hide what's in your heart. It will eventually come out. So, so we get so busy uh, with the work of the Lord, we forget about the Lord of the work. We get so busy doing things for people. We get so busy serving the Lord that we forget about the Lord. God wants us to serve him. He wants us to do his work. He wants us to, to, to do things in the kingdom of God too. But we don't, he don't want us to get so busy with those things that we forget about him. He didn't call us to be busy. He called us to be productive. Amen. God wants us to produce things. He doesn't want us to be working, working here because a lot of us are doing a whole lot of stuff and we ain't producing nothing. We're not, there, there, there's no works. There's, there, there, there's no works. We, we got faith, but there's no works. We're, we're doing a whole lot of stuff, but nothing's coming out of what we are doing. So why don't we focus? That's time. So let's use this time, this downtime, this quarantine time, to shift our focus back on him. Because a lot of us can't do some of the things we used to do at the church because the church is closed. Some people are still working behind the scenes because stuff has to be done, but some folk are not able to go to that building or be able to do what they usually do. And I bet that's running you crazy. <laughs> I bet that they, that's really bothering you that you can't do what you normally do and you feel like you're not serving God. Let me tell you one thing. Working at the church is not going to get you in heaven. 
God knows exactly what's in your heart. That's why people always say, well, I ain't got to go to church. The Lord know my heart. True, he does know your heart. And the Bible says it's deceitful in all his ways. And therefore, that's why David prayed, Lord, give me a clean heart. So during this time of quarantine, during this time of shutdown, during this time away from the four walls of the church, pray God, give me a clean heart. Renew a spirit in me. God, I need to be revived. God, I've been working so hard that I have not been receiving anything. This is the time for you to receive. Glory to God. This is the time that you have been given so much. God wants you to sit down and receive a word. God wants you to sit down and get in his word. God wants you to sit Sit down and be in his presence. And that takes us back to the text. We look, it's two people, it's three people in this scene in the Bible. It's Jesus, Mary, and Martha. So at first we're introduced to Martha. Martha welcomed him in, made him feel quite at home. She was hospitable. She welcomed Jesus into the house. She had a sister, Mary, who sat before the master, hanging on every word that he said. We know that everywhere Jesus went, there was a crowd hanging around. This time, they got a private lesson. They got a private word. They didn't have to fight with the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the people who were trying to find stuff to convict Jesus or the people who were coming for healing who were fighting. They didn't have to go through all that. He was in their house. The living word was in their house. The Savior was in their house. So Martha kept working, but Mary said, I need to sit at the feet of the Savior. That Mary said, I got a need, hallelujah. I know it's stuff that needs to be done, but I've got something that I need for me, hallelujah. Mary is saying, I believe she's saying, I can, Mark, Mark, I appreciate all you're doing for Jesus. I, I appreciate what you're doing. I, I know I should be helping you clean up. I know I should be helping you uh, fix this food. I, I know I should be helping you count this money during the offering. I know I should be going to this anniversary choir union. I know I should be doing all this, but I can't do that right now. Why? Because I need a word. I need to sit my behind down at the feet of Jesus because I need to be filled. Glory to God. You got to get to a point in your life where you say, Lord, if, if you don't fill me up, I can't do anything else. Look, I'm on empty. So this is an example of somebody being on empty or somebody saying that I don't care what's going on in the world around me. I'm going to get what I need from Jesus. Sit down, saints. <laughs> Glory to God. Sit down and rest a while and receive what Jesus has for you. The, the, the message Bible says she hung on every word that he said. That shows me she needed something from the Lord. She knew that if Jesus were to speak to her, she would get exactly what she needed. She knew that Jesus was speaking to her life. She knew that the words that were coming out of her mouth, his mouth was going to give her life. So glory to God. She was listening to what he said. So I believe Jesus was preaching, and he probably had a word tailor-made for them. You ever been in church? And I, I, my members accuse me of this all the time, say I was in their business. I must have been listening. No, that's just the word of God has given me that just confirms what he's already been dealing with with you. I don't know what you're going through. I just tell, give you what the Lord gives to me. So, But th the difference here is Jesus knew exactly what Mary and Martha needed. He knew exactly the word that they need. So he probably came to that house to give them the word that they needed. And Mary said, I'm going to get it right now. But the Bible says Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Saints, stop being distracted. Glory to God. God is removing the distractions out of the way. Glory to God. This is what this is doing. It's removing some of those unnecessary distractions out of the way. And once God removes those distractions, you can't allow other distractions to come in. So let me tell you one thing that's the main distraction of us getting closer to God right now. It's the news. We are so distracted by what we see on the screen. I'm not talking about you not being aware of what's going on, but don't get overwhelmed. Don't get engulfed. Don't get 
inundated by what you see on the news that you can't focus on him. Glory to God. I know you need to know what's going on, but you need to know what he has to say about what's going on. You need to know how he's going to keep you while everything is going on. You need to know where your strength is coming from, where all of this is going on. So, I, 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 yeah, watch it in the morning. Yeah, take you about 10 minutes to watch the news, but spend the rest of the time because they talk about the same stuff over and over and over again. You get these news reports, and I, and I don't mean to, every time they keep saying more people are getting the, the virus and more people are, are dying from it. I don't need to hear that every hour on the hour, I, and, I, and I know it may get worse before it get better, but I believe that people are still being healed. People are still being delivered. So that that's the good news, glory to God. The good news that God is still healing people, that God is still speaking through his word. God is still speaking through what he's doing in the earth. Be not dismayed by what you see. Be not dismayed by what you hear. You got to trust in the Lord. You got to trust in what he said in his word, all of his promises. So don't be distracted by what you see, glory to God. Don't be distracted by what you hear. You've got to put your focus on God. When that stuff gets too much, when that stuff, it gets too heavy, sit down. Glory to God. I don't know what Mary and Martha was going through, but Mary probably said, it's too much. I just got to sit down at his feet. Martha, you can go ahead. Go on and fix what you're going to fix, but I'm going to sit at his feet and receive him. She got distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She figured everything had to be perfect for him. Jesus is not looking for perfection because he's already perfect. Glory to God. He's the only perfect person. He knows we're not perfect. We're striving for perfection. So it don't have to be right before you bring it to Jesus. You might have been cooking something. She's like, it got to be right. You know how you're cooking something for somebody you're trying to impress. You got to make sure everything is right. You taste it all. You got to add a little bit of this. And they got people in the house. They hungry because they waiting on you to bring out the food. But you in there trying to make sure it's right. Jesus said, I don't want it to be right. I just want you. Oh, glory to God. Let me say that one more time. Jesus is telling us today, I don't want you to be right. I just want you. I don't want you to be fixed. I just want you. I don't want the solution to be solved by you. I just want you. Guess what? Because if you give yourself to him, whatever's broken in your life, he'll fix it. Whatever's not right in your life, he'll put it back together. Whatever's broken in your life, he'll put it back together. Whatever situation that you have, God will solve it. Whatever problem, he'll give you the answer. All he wants is you. Come lay at my feet, child. Come let me give you rest. Come let me give you peace. Come let me give you comfort in your time. Sit down. Sit down and rest. Sit down, servant. Sit down. I've got word for you. I've got good news for you. I've got hope for you. We have have we excuse me. We've got to learn how to rest. We've got to learn how to replenish ourselves. We've got to learn how to receive glory to God what the Lord has for us. And and and, and this is a time to take all this word in. We're getting word after word. You're getting all the, uh, the pa- I, and I want to shout out to all the pastors out there who are doing a great job making sure that their members are continuing to get the word of God because this is what we need to make it through this time. But members, I, I, I implore you, I beseech you to make sure that you're allowing the word to take root in your life, uh, that you're allowing the word to come to life in your life, and that you are allowing the word to become not just words in your heart, but action in your feet your hands and your mouth. You've got to make sure that you are digesting the word and putting it into action. Are you applying what you have received? God is giving all this good news. God is giving all this food, all the meat that we need to live off of. But are you living? You're eating all this stuff and you're still dying. You're getting all this word and you're still depressed. You're getting all this word and you're still discouraged. You got to ask yourself, uh, what, what's distracting me? What's keeping me from, um, from, from digesting this? What's keeping me from receiving this? What's keeping me from applying this? Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And Jesus was not even concerned about that. She came and she asked him, Lord, don't you care? You know, the saints and 
in the New Testament, they always wanted to ask Jesus, don't you care? Jesus cared so much that he died for us. Glory to God. They didn't know that yet because he had, he was still living, but they would see in a minute that he cared a whole lot. She said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? So Mary probably had, excuse me, Martha probably had an attitude at this point. You know how y'all get attitude. I done did all this cleaning. I done did all this cooking. And y'all sitting around there talking. Probably, she was probably slamming pots around, slamming doors around, slamming counter doors, cabinets around, making noise so people can really see that they're doing something in there. Well, they weren't concerned about that. They just wanted to be together. They just wanted to commune together. Mary just wanted the word. Jesus just wanted to bless them. And that's what he was trying to, and she said, the, uh, my sister has left me to do the work. Then she she went from asking a question to get indignant. Martha had a little sassy mouth. She said, tell her to help me. But if I'd have been Jesus, I'd be like, who she think she talking to? Tell her to help me. That's why he said he probably laughed it off. Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Let me go to the, the message Bible. Martha, she said later she stepped in, and the message says Martha interrupted them. So maybe Mary and Jesus were having dialogue. Mary's asking questions, and Jesus is giving answers. And she interrupted them, saying, Master, don't you care that my sister has abandoned the kitchen to me? First of all, I ain't never seen it. They might have left the dialogue out. But I didn't see Mary tell her to go to the kitchen. Martha probably went there on her own. So she, she got mad. She said, tell her to lend me a hand. Then the master said, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much and getting yourself worked up over nothing. Stop fussing, saints. Stop getting yourself worked up over nothing. You mad about stuff. You fussing about stuff. Man, at what somebody else did, and that person gone living their life, that person living their best life, having a good time, and you mad and they happy. Stop worrying about stuff that's not important. Stop worrying about stuff that doesn't really mean that much to everybody else. I know it means a lot to you. Nobody's disregarding your feelings, but just because it means that much to you, that don't mean it means that much to everybody else, and you can't get mad. Glory to God that people don't um, um, value stuff the way you do. Guess what? We all have our own minds. We all have our own emotions. You can't control mine. I can't control yours. I can only handle what you give me. You giving me an attitude because I don't understand you. That's not going to help me understand you any better. Tell her to lend me a hand. But you got to know who you're working with. Mary's, Martha should have known her sister Mary had a need. Their sisters, they live in the same house. She should have known that Mary was probably going through something that she needed a word. Martha probably needed a word too, but she allowed what she was doing. She allowed what she thought she had to do to keep her from getting what Jesus had for her. Then, I still in the Message Bible, verse 41, it says, Then the Master said, Martha, Martha, dear Martha, you are fussing far too much, getting yourself worked up over nothing. One thing only is essential. You know, we hear that word a whole lot during this time. One thing only is essential, and Mary has chosen it. It's the main course, and it won't be taken from her. The essential thing that Jesus was talking about was being in his presence, listening to his word, glory to God. There's one thing, one thing, and, and, and we've heard that one thing mentioned a, a few times in the Bible. Psalms 27 and 4 says, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Luke 18, 22, When Jesus heard these things, he said to them, You still lack one thing. Come, follow me. Paul said in Philippians 3, 13 through 14, Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehend it, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. The one thing that we need is Jesus. 
and 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 his word and and that's what Mary chose that day and it will not be taken away from her regardless of what you think she might need Martha Mary chose the right thing Mary chose what she needed in that moment. And what we need in this moment is to be with Jesus. I'm not talking about dying and going to heaven. I'm talking about being in his presence right now, getting in his word, listening to him, sitting still, glory to God, sitting still at the feet of Jesus and hearing what he has to say to you. You've got to sit down, sit at the Savior's feet, be in his presence, glory to God. Um, Charles Spurgeon, a great theologian, said the one thing needful evidently is that that which Mary cho chose, the, that good part which, she, which should not be taken away from her. Very clearly, this was to sit at Jesus' feet and to hear his word. That's what the need was, to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his word. To sit at the feet of Jesus implies a readiness to accept and obey what Jesus teaches. So Mary was ready, hallelujah, to accept what Jesus was going to tell her because she needed a word. I don't know anybody need a word out there. So, but you all, we always say, I need a word from the Lord. But will you accept what he says? Will you, and will you obey what he says? We want the word, we hear the word, but do we accept it and do we obey? You're going to sit at his feet, you got to accept what he says. And obey what he says. So whatever he tells you to do, you got to do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus is looking for somebody that's going to obey. He ain't just giving out these words for nothing. He's giving these words out to change your life. He's transformative. He's a life changer. You can't experience him and stay the same that you are. Because in your experience, you accept Jesus and you obey what he says. To sit at the feet of Jesus implies submission to Jesus. And rebellion is done with. That means I'm not going to just get up and get mad at what he says because he's telling the truth. Because he's stepping on my toes. He's in my business. He's supposed to be in your business. He's Jesus. I'm not going to get mad and run away because it's not what I want to hear. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to submit to his authority and I'm going to do his will. To sit at the feet of Jesus implies faith in who Jesus is. You sit at his feet because you believe in his power. You sit at his feet because you believe who he is. You believe that he is God. You believe that the word is in him. You believe that he is the living word. You believe he's a healer, provider, a teacher, all these things that we call him. When you sit at his feet, when you quiet yourself down, when you study yourself down, you believe in who he is. I don't know about you, but I believe Jesus. My faith is in Jesus. I know he can do all things. Glory to God. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in me. And so my power is to sit my behind down and receive what he has for me. Glory to God. To sit at his feet implies discipleship. That means I want to be discipled by him. I want him to teach me. I want him to show me the way so I can go forth and do it for somebody else. You're receiving from Jesus to be a blessing to somebody else. To sit at his feet implies that you love him. Glory to God. And I don't know about you, but I love him. I love him with a wonderful way. I love him with a mighty Mighty, mighty way. Jesus didn't chastise Martha. He didn't make her feel bad. He just wanted her to know that what her sister did wasn't wrong. She chose the good part. She chose it. And that will never be taken from her. Your communion and your fellowship and your time with Jesus can never be taken away from you. Unless you move away. He never leaves. We leave. He's always there. Spend time with him. Get all the distractions out of the way. Move every stumbling block. Lay aside every weight that so 
easily besets us. We got to make sure that we're able to get to Jesus. We got to make sure that we forget those things that are behind us and press towards him. We got to make sure that the one thing that we do desire is to dwell in his house forever. Get all those other things off your mind and get back to the one thing. Glory to God. Somebody say one thing. The one thing is to be with Jesus. I want to be in his presence. In the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord, there is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. That's where I want to be. Entering to his gates with thanksgiving. Entering to his courts with praise. That's where I want to be. I want to be in the presence of the Lord. I want to be in his company. I want to be around him. I don't. The Bible says, "He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow." I want to be under his shadow. I want to be under his company. I want to be under his covering. So whatever's outside going on, I ain't worried about that. Glory to God. Growing up, I, I didn't like to go outside. I, I, I stayed in the house. I'm like, well, we going to play this? We're going outside. I'm gonna stay in here. Well, we're going to do this. We're going to play the game. We're going to do this. I'm going to stay right here. And that's what we need to get the mindset right now. People may be doing a whole lot of other stuff, but you know what you need for God. And so when they try to get you to go, uh -uh, I'm going to stay right here. I need this word. Uh -uh. Well, we need to go do this. No, I need to pray. Well, we need to go do this. I need to worship. We need to go. Do, uh -uh, I need to sing this song. Well, we need to go. Do, uh -uh, I need to fast. I need to pray. I need to listen to this sermon. I need to read this scripture again because I I need something from the Lord. Get what you need from the Lord. God did not call us, again, I'm going to say this, to be busy. He called us to be productive. What are you producing? All this work, what are you producing? You've been working this hard. It's, it's a wonderful thing to see the product of your work. God tells us in this, Martha was real busy trying to make sure everything was right for Jesus. When Jesus was just wanting them to be in his company, he didn't care about all that fancy stuff and everything being perfect because he was already perfect. He didn't need anything to be perfect. He just wanted them to be there so he could give them what he had for them. Jesus has a word for you. Today, this word was for you. And I'm glad that you sat down, took time out your schedule, to sit at the feet of the Savior and receive the word. It's always time to do other stuff, but we've got to find time to do the right thing, the one thing, and that's to sit at the feet of the Savior. That's to receive what Jesus is saying to us through the reading of the word, through just prayer, and sometimes just sitting there being quiet. And allow the Lord to talk to you. What do you need from God today? We ain't that busy. We don't have all that stuff to do. We want to be busy. We want a lot of stuff we do to be seen. But the only person we need to be seen by is God. So, be like Mary. Choose the good part. And it will not be taken away from you. Don't be like Martha and worry about all the other stuff that's not important. Choose the essential thing. And this is what essential is doing this time, is to be with Jesus. All of us are essential workers. We need to be sitting at the feet of Jesus and receiving what he has for us. There is a word from the Lord. We hear a lot of preachers say that. But right before they preach, but there is a word from the Lord. He wants you to hear it, so sit down. Get all the distractions out of your way. Close yourself off. Open your ears, your hearts, your minds, and your spirits, and receive exactly what the Lord has for you. It's for you. And there's a blessing. It's life changing. Will you hear him? And after you hear him, will you receive what he has said? After you receive what he said, will you obey what he says? And will you do what he tells you to do? There's a lot of questions. 
But we got time to figure it out. Amen. We got time to sit at his feet. We don't have to be busy doing all this other stuff. That's not essential. That's not essential. The essential thing, the one thing is to be at the feet of Jesus. To listen and receive the word that he has for you. God has a word for you. And I pray that you have received this word today. Go back and read that. Luke 10, 38 to 42. And see how Martha and Mary, two contrasting sisters. Both was in the presence of Jesus. But they each decided to do different things. Choose Mary's side. Sit out. Rest. And let Jesus minister you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you glory. We give you honor. For truly you are good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you today for this reminder for us to sit down, for us to rest, and to receive from you. Thank you for what you have to say. Thank you for what's in your heart towards us. Thank you, God, that you are mindful to us. Thank you, God, that we are on your agenda, that you have a tailor-made word for each, every one of us based on what we are going through. Thank you that Jesus is still alive and he's still speaking. He's still doing great things in our lives, and we thank you today. God, continue to speak to us and we will continue to hear. Continue to speak to us and we will continue to obey. Continue to speak to us and we will continue to do what you have asked for us to do. God, we don't want to just be busy. We want to be productive. Hallelujah. We want to be producing great works in the kingdom because Jesus told us greater works than these shall we do. So, God, we thank you, God, that as we are productive, as we are listening, as we are being obedient, as we are doing what the Lord tells us to do, God, you will show us signs, wonders, and miracles. We thank you, God, that they are on the way and we will see them very soon. We will see the manifestation of of what you are saying. We will see your word come to life inside of us and through our works in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you today that you are a healer. We send your healing angels to the hospital right now in the name of Jesus, God. We pray for everyone who's sick from this virus or any other sickness. We pray for those families who are going through bereavement. Give them comfort right now. We thank you for this church, Cedar Creek Community Church. I thank you for every church, God. I thank you for every pastor right now in the name of Jesus. Christ. Empower them. Give them strength. Let them know they are doing a good job and we will make it through this, God. We thank you that you are keeping us and we thank you that as long as our minds are on you, you will keep us in perfect peace. God, but give us rest. Hallelujah. Like you told, like David said, you let us rest in the meadow's grass. God, let us rest. And as we are resting, we are sitting at your feet and receiving from you. Speak to us, Lord, and we will receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I pray that you were blessed by this. So go forth and be blessed. Go forth and do the work of the Lord. Let's not be busy, but let's be productive. In Jesus' name. Take care. Good night.